फ्रेंड्स बेस्ड ऑन सिंपल आउटक्रॉप प्रॉब्लम जोमेट्रिकल टेक्नोमेट्रिक रिलेशनशिप वी आर एबल टू सॉल्व सिंपल जियोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लम्स कनेक्टेड विथ अवर इंजीनियरिंग एक्टिविटीज बट दैट इज नॉट एडेक्वेट वेन वी हैव ए कॉम्प्लेक्स प्रॉब्लम्स लाइक अ टनल डैम एटसेट्रा we need to understand much more details about the ground understand the underground condition now in such cases the attempt what we have done simple trigonometric deep end stack problem is not adequate we have to have, take bore holes but how to read the bore hole information and make use for understanding सब सरफेस जियोलॉजिकल कंडीशन टू हैंडल कॉम्प्लेक्स इंजीनियरिंग प्रॉब्लम फ्रेंड्स सपोज दिस इज ए हिली एरिया लाइक दिस लाइक दिस लाइक दिस इफ आई हैव ऑब्जर्व एंड फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर आई हैव ए लाइम स्टोन बेड इज फाउंड एंड हियर देन आई मेक दिस ऑल्सो ग्राउंड दिस इज द ग्राउंड ओके sorry yeah. so this is the ground from which this is the ground from which we observe we have a limestone this is a kind of rock we believe this rock is suitable we try to construct a tunnel like this we assume that a tunnel passes all through through the same type of rock formation but we want to confirm it therefore if you take a bore hole and then here this is some other rock this is this below this one rock but here to here is some other rock therefore this bore hole intersect this rock and this rock our now understanding is the tunnel intersect this rock and this rock you want to take confirm one more therefore one more bore hole you find this rock is also there this rock is also there this rock therefore tunnel may pass through different layers of rocks therefore we do not know much about the underground below the surface what exactly we take a number of bore holes and from this bore holes we try to understand the geological condition along the tunnel all along the tunnel length tunnel section so this is a geological simple profile we have a limestone we have a volcanic we have a clay bed uh, many other rocks and therefore we believe subsurface geological geological condition something different and therefore we need to understand and now how to use the bore hole information for example if this is the ground if this is the rock i may take a bore hole i may take a bore hole or i may take a bore hole like this now we do not know what happens suppose i have a bore hole here i have bore hole here i have a bore hole here based on the relationship between these bore hole the distance depth etc i calculate and find next bore hole if i put it will intersect that the same rock here but if that bore hole intersect the same rock here instead of here what is our interpretation we want to understand therefore we one more bore hole we put instead of cutting here the same that may intersect here then using the relationship of these and these i infer somewhere there was a dislocation this bed instead of here pushed here possible yes is this really possible we don't know suppose instead of rocks like this if we have this kind of relationship then we have another situation for example these i have one bore hole another bore hole one more, like this based on their relationship i put another bore hole instead of here they may intersect here i cannot jump into like this the situation correct 
Now I put one more borehole that I get here instead of here. Now I have a different scenario than here. Therefore, below subsurface, if I have a bed and put one borehole here, another borehole here, this bed may like this, if I may get, or uh, this bed may have this, then if I put a borehole, I may not intersect this bed at all, any length, or if I have like this situation, if this is the bed, I believe it continues like this. If I put borehole here, here, based on that relationship, I anticipate, but that rock is here. It is not here, as in the previous case, it is not here, it is here. Then my estimated calculation depth, I may get that bet here. That is, some dislocation movement has taken place. Such a simple interpretation. One is whether the beds are folded like this, whether the beds are folded like this, possible if dislocated, dislocated like this, any of this such kind of information is possible to understand through borehole data. I do not mean this enough. We also have to have additional information. If required, we will try to understand little later. One by one, we shall try to understand. Now, with this simple borehole, how we will able to understand the borehole data. So, now, using simple borehole information, we will try to understand and then we need to learn how exactly we make use of the borehole data. We shall start with a simple problem. Suppose I have an area, I have a map. I have a map. When I say map, it has a north line. I have selected one borehole, one borehole, one borehole here. If I construct, they become a triangle like this. In a triangular fashion, often remember in a map, we suggest the location of borehole. This become a permanent record. Map is a record. On that we do. Okay. Problems can be twisted in a different fashion. That is, they say borehole P is to the east of borehole R or to the west of that or not 30 degree east, so much distance like this, people may ask slightly different expression of the problem. That's all. Otherwise, approach is the same. Now, we have a problem here. Three boreholes P, Q, R are taken from a horizontal ground. This is the horizontal ground. We have P borehole, we have Q borehole, we have a, like this. This is P, this is Q, this is R. Remember, P, Q, R not necessarily. This can be P, this can be Q. Anywhere you put, it is immaterial. That is not the problem. So, now, thing is P, Q, R, three boreholes are proposes the three boreholes reach a sheared sandstone, fractured, cracked, jointed sandstone bed at a depth of 1000 meter, 1100 meter and 400 meter respectively. In borehole P, 1000 meter, borehole Q, 1100 meter, borehole R, 400 meter depth. The location of the borehole is shown in the map. When I say map, it has a north line, it has a scale, correct? Shown on the map. Find out the dip and strike of the sandstone bed. People do call attitude, behavior of the rock, one and the same. I have split, dip and strike, one and the same, remember. Find out the attitude of the bed or dip and strike of the sandstone bed. If another borehole, S is proposed due north to the north of P, to the north of P, at a distance of 100 meter. From 100 meter north of P, another borehole S is proposed. If that is the case, from P, at what depth the borehole reaches the sheared sandstone? We have to estimate, I have to give the contract or something. You try to understand. 
Now the problem starts with the simple, we have the ground like this. This is P. It reaches up to 1000 meter. P, 1000 meter. Q, 1100 meter. The same I have shown. And R, 400 meter. Now, I have tried to represent. If I consider borehole P and Q only, two, what is my understanding? P is at shallow depth, 1000 meter, Q is at 1, uh, 1100 meter, therefore bed is sloping from P to Q. Correct? Yes. If I consider R and P, R is at 400 meter, Q is 1000 meter, so beds are sloping from R to P. This is inclination. If I consider R and Q, R is 400, Q is 1100, it is sloping from R to Q. It means how a bed can show different slope in different direction. Perhaps these are not true dips. These are all apparent dips. From apparent dip, I have to find out the true dip. We have done first our problem. Now that concept we apply here. Okay. We have now next the same thing we have. Gradient is from, I have shown this is P and this is Q, P to Q, P here, Q here. Gradient P to Q, what is in the direction? What is a P to Q? P is here, Q is here, this is the direction. P to Q, I have to read the bearing, whole circle bearing, quadrant bearing, one and the same, whatever. So, using protector, we will try to measure, say, south so much degree. How much it is? So, south 60 degree east. This is south 62 degree, 62 degree east. That is measured. Okay. Now, how to find the gradient? Gradient equal to ground distance divided by elevation difference between those two points. How do we find the ground distance? Ground distance is equal to map distance between P and Q, map distance into scale. Here to here you measure. It is a 3 centimeter they have given. So, ground distance into map distance give the scale. This is the map distance, this is the scale that is 500 meter, that is become 1500 meter and then elevation difference between those two points. Elevation difference between P and Q. P is 1000 meter, Q is 1100 meter. Then it is PQ, therefore 3 into scale that is 500, that is a 1500. Elevation difference 1100 minus 1000, that is 100. Therefore, gradient along south 62 degree is 1 is to 15. Similarly, gradient between R to P. If this is Q, yes, this is Q. Uh, this is P, Q, R, R to yes, R to gradient R to P. It is R to P. Where is here is R, here is P, R to P. This is the direction I have to read. North 60 degree here it is. So it is north 60 degree east. Ground distance between R and P is ground distance between R and P is map distance into scale. That is 3.1 is the map distance into scale 500 meter divided by elevation difference. This is 400, this is 1000 meter. That is, we get value of 1.26. 3.1 into 500 divided by 600 is 1.26. That is the gradient along this. Now, gradient between R and Q. This is R and Q. What is R and Q? 
may be towards east, correct? And the ground distance is 5.5. We shall use gradient r to q towards east, ground distance between r and q that is 5.5 centimeter into map, dis map scale 500 meter, 1 is to 500 we have said. Then elevation difference between 1100 and 400. So 5.5 into 500 that is 1750 something divided by 4, this is 600, we get something 1 is to 3.9. We got the gradient. What is next? I have used that. So south 60 degree east, 1 is to 15 we got. So 62 degree, 1 is to 15. I keep the protractor here, 62 degree I mark, select a suitable scale, 1 centimeter as 1 unit. Now I have to represent 15 unit, this 15 unit, I take 15 centimeter along the direction, along 62. So 62 degree I have marked, 1 is to 15, means 15 units I have shown, 1 point I got, correct? Then next is, this is 1 is to 2.6 along north 60 degree. I keep the protector here, 1 is to, this is north 60 degree and it is how much? 1 is to 2.6 I cut, that is this direction. 1 centimeter, 2.6, 1 is to 2.6 centimeter I have shown, okay. Next is 3.9 in the direction of east, it is. So towards east, 1, 2, 3, 3.9, 3.9. Now this is 1 is to 15, 1 is to 3.9. 1 is to 2.6, passing through all this point, you draw a line that become the strike line, nothing but the orientation, the bed. We got the strike line. Now, uh, what is attitude? Depend strike. Once I got the strike line, from center O, I can drop perpendicular to the strike line, that become the true dip. What is the true dip? It is perpendicular to the strike line from O. From O drop perpendicular to the strike line, then this becomes the true dip. Measure that direction with the help of a protector. This may be north 35 degree east. And measure the distance, it may be 1 point something like this. That is a 2, 1 is to 2. Therefore, true dip is 1 is to 2 along north 35 degree east. That is a true dip direction, 1 is to 2 is the true dip amount. And what is the, this is the strike direction, what is the direction of that line? If this is a 35, in this uh, triangle, we know if this is 35, this is uh, 90 degree. Therefore, this angle equal to this angle that is 55 degree. That is nothing but the direction of a strike line. Now I got the direction of strike line, true dip I got. Yes. Now, what is next? We have in the formula problem, another borehole S is proposed to the north of P at a distance of 100 meter. Now, what is the gradient in the direction of north? This is the north. In the direction of north, that is the strike line intersect the north line, this point, that becomes the gradient along the north. Gradient varies here, 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 here. This varies along the north, this is the gradient. That is, from the point of intersection to the point of intersection of strike line and the north line, I have to measure. So that gives, so that gives the gradient towards north is 1, 1 is to 3, gradient is 1 is to 3 towards the north. In the problem they have given from P 
to the next borehole S is a hundred meter. Yes, given. Yes, we know gradient equal to ground distance divided by elevation difference with respect to P. Ground distance gradient equal to ground distance divided by elevation difference with respect to P because P is the reference point for us. It means if I have a borehole, this is a bed, if this is a borehole, if this is one borehole, one borehole, whether I refer this as, whether I refer this, this, if this is P, with respect to P only, I have to say next one. If I say it is Q, with respect to Q, if this is R, with respect to R. So what is my reference point? Here they have said with respect to P. So P is already at a depth of 1000 meter. We know. Therefore, gradient equal to ground distance divided by say x is the depth at S. Let us have assume therefore S minus 1000 meter should be the depth in the borehole S. Now, 3 divided by x minus 100, correct? Or we want to find this 100, we shall bring like this, or 3 we shall bring, take this, this, you take this, you take this. Then we have this we get. So, divided by this 3 and this 3 is missing, sorry. Okay. Now, x equal to, this, sorry, 100 divided by 3, 3 is missing. Now, depth at s equal to 100 divided by 3 is 33.33 plus 1000, means 1033 meter is the depth in the borehole s. Thus, now I am able to estimate. That meaning is, if I have a bed here, I have a bed, this is one borehole, this is another borehole, another borehole, fourth borehole I have proposed at here, that should interact at this much depth. That is, I have estimated. Now, we can go to the ground and check if it is exactly 1033 meter, yes, beds is continuing like this. If it is less than or more than, beds are not there, they are displaced. Thus, from calculated estimated depth to the real actual depth in the ground, when we take the borehole, the difference should help us to understand what has happened. Yes, one more problem we shall try. Slightly simple, slightly different. Okay. A gold bearing quartz vein is intersected in a three boreholes. We have taken three boreholes. One, two, three, say A borehole, B hole, C hole. We have borehole A, B and C. They intersect at a depth of A at a depth of 450, B at a depth of 300, C at a depth of 800 meter respectively. The locations of the boreholes are shown in the map. We have north, we have the scale, everything is given. Then, therefore, I can easily find out. The location of this I have to find out are shown in the map. Find out the deep end strike of the quartz vein. If another borehole D is proposed in a direction of north 70 degree west of A, this is A, north 70 degree west of A, somewhere here, at a distance of 700 meter. From A, 700 meter, north 70 degree west, 70 degree west of A, another borehole. Here is S, D borehole. In what depth the same bed will be found in borehole D? That is a question. Clear? We shall try now. Now, so what is that? We have, we have, say this is the ground. I have taken borehole A. This is up to depth of 450 meter. 
one more borehole B is up to depth of 300 meter. This is B, this is A, one more borehole C up to 800 meter. If I refer A and B, B to A, gradient is B to A. If I refer A and C, it is A to C. Between B and C, it is B to C. These are the directions I have to refer. And accordingly, I have to read. What is that? B to A, B to A. I have to read this angle. B to A or A to B. I have to. This is very important. Reading the bearing is very important. Now, we will try to understand this problem. Okay. Now, gradient A to C in the direction here. A to C, this is north 10 degree, north 10 degree west is, what is the gradient? Ground distance between A and C, that is ground distance between A and C, map distance into scale, that is A and C divided by elevation difference, A is at 450 and C is 800 the elevation difference. So, we have 3.85 is the ground map distance into scale that gives the ground distance. Then elevation difference between C is at 800, A is at 450. Therefore, what do we get? 3.85 into 300 divided by 350, 800 minus 450 that is like then we get 3.3. 1 is to 3.3 .3 in the direction of north 10 degree east. Then we have gradient, what is that? Between B and C. B here, B is at 300, C is at 800, so B to C. This angle we have to read, that is protector here use north, that is Gradient to B is north 60 degree west, north 60 degree west, so 68 I would, yeah, sorry it should be 60, okay, north 60 degree west, gradient is north 60 degree west, ground distance divided by elevation difference gives the gradient along that. What is the ground distance? This is between B and C is ground distance is 6.5, 6 6.5 into 300 scale divided by 800 is the C, 300 is the B and I get 3.91 is to 3.9. This is gradient. Then we have gradient between B to A. B is at, B is at 300. A is at 450, it is this angle I have to read. That angle how much? It is 82 degree west. This angle is 82 degree from here to here. Maybe this like this, keep the protector here and read like this, it is 82 degree. Yes, ground distance between B and A is Elevation difference between B and A, ground distance, map distance is 5 into scale divided by B is 300 meter, A is 450, that elevation difference, I get 10, 1 is to 10. This I have to plot. Now, 82 degree, that is, I have shown 82 degree, that is, 1 is to 10, keep the protector here, marked out like this, like this, 82 degree. From the center, 10 centimeter, depends on the scale we have shifted, 1 centimeter as 1 unit they have preferred, therefore 10 unit, I got 1. Next is 3.9 in the direction of north, north 60 degree, I have to have north 60 degree, how much? 1 is to 3.9, 1, 2, 3, 3.9. I have drawn like this. Next is, next is 
3.3 in the direction of north 10 degree. So, keep the protector here 0 10 north 10 degree 3.3 I have marked. Passing through this point, this point, this point draw a line that becomes the strike line. I know perpendicular to the direction of strike line from O, if I drop that becomes the true dip. To this strike line from O as center, I have dropped perpendicular that becomes the true dip. I measure the angle of the true dip that may be 20 degree something. Okay, I have marked this some degree and if I measure here from here to here 1, 2, 3 that become 3.1, thus 1 is to 3.1 is the true dip. This is the true dip, this is the angle, this is the distance, that is the true dip. If this is the true dip, what is the direction of this is? If this is 20 degree, this should be 62 degree because this is 90 degree, this is 28 degree. This should be therefore this angle equal to this angle. This is the direction of a strike line, should be 62 degree. Fine. Now we have found slope. Correct. Perfect. That is bed. Now another borehole D is proposed in the direction of north 70 degree west. Keep the protector here, north 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, north like this, north 70 degree east, another borehole, you draw. That intersects with the strike line here. So, from here to here, if I measure, that becomes the gradient. So, now, if I measure, that is 4.5. And in the problem they have given, Distance between A to S is 700 meter. With respect to A, they have given. So, A to borehole D is 700, 700 meter. So, that is the ground distance. This is the elevation difference. Therefore, X I can compute that is between 455 plus 155. That is 605.55 meter is the depth in the borehole D. Now, we are able to understand the depth. This I have taken only one borehole. If I have several boreholes, if in the several direction, if I can take, try to understand what has happened, then using that data, I can understand if with respect to one borehole, second borehole, if the third borehole I take, whether at a calculated depth or if I get here, one more borehole I take, then it may be like this. This is the dislocation or I can understand if the beds are like this, one borehole, second borehole, the third borehole here, fourth borehole here, based on this, instead of here, this depth, it is here. Next board instead of this depth, it is here. Then I have to reconstruct how it is possible. Thus, we are able to understand the subsurface geological condition using simple borrow data. Often, this is not adequate. We also go for some electrical resistivity method. Then if you are interested in some metallic deposits, we also go for so many other techniques. Resistivity is one technique. People also go for seismic refraction method. That is more complicated, but this is more desirable if I have to go deeper than 1000 meter. That is seismic refraction method up to 1000 meters satisfactorily we can get from electrical resistivity method. Even we also do other method, magnetic method for mineral exploration, etc. So some property, geophysical property, we use some instruments, some properties of the rocks we measure and then we try to understand 
based on their behavior. Now we shall start with simple electrical resistivity method. What is that electrical resistivity method? In general, rocks are not good conductors of electricity. They are resistant for flow of current. But if there is a water present in the rock, it becomes conductive. Therefore, I can use this to understand whether there is a presence or absence of water. Rocks are bad conductor. If there some minerals are present, say copper, it is highly conductive, then very easily current can flow. Resistance is very low. I measure the resistivity now to understand if there is any mineral deposit as well. Suppose I have a rock containing perfectly is a dry, no water, nothing. It is perfectly non-porous, very hard granite like resistivity is very high. Correct? So resistivity is a kind of a property I can be dependent on. I want to know whether, suppose I have a sandstone, porous rock, it gives some per electrical resistivity. Reciprocal of resistivity is nothing but the conductivity. Whether I talk conductivity, resistivity, resistivity, one and the same. Okay. Now, I measure the resistivity of the sandstone. If the, it is perfectly dry, its resistivity is some value. If it contains water, its resistivity is still low because water makes conductive because presence of water, water through that easily current can flow. Therefore, its conductivity is high means resistivity is low. So, dry sandstone has high resistivity. If the same sandstone is now containing water, its resistivity is low. We know pure water is not good conductive. If I add little amount of salt or acid, it becomes much better conductive. Therefore, if the sandstone contains saline or acidic water, its conductivity should be much better. Resistivity is much low. It means even I can say whether water is a saline or acidic. Yes, I can depending on the resistivity. I can say at what depth what rock is there. What is its resistivity? Is it a dry or saturated? If it is saturated, what is the quality of the water, etc. I can understand. People use exclusively this one for finding water, but to understand subsurface rocks also we can understand. Here we depend on the resistivity of the rock, simple. I give, suppose this is the horizontal, if this is the depth, I measure the resistivity of the rocks with the depth, here resistivity that is, resistivity is low, 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 very low, suddenly very high, again low, 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 like this. Very low resistivity here, very high resistivity. What I mean? Perhaps I have a rock, this is containing water, therefore at this depth, this resistivity is very low, easily current flows. Below that, resistivity is very high. Perhaps this is a non-porous, non-permeable rock. Therefore, resistivity is very high. And it is very under, wonderful condition for me. Water percolates and it cannot traverse across this, get saturated. Therefore, there should be a good amount of water for me. This I use. Therefore, I use electrical resistivity. It is, I am measuring the resistivity with the depth. Suppose I have to have a resistivity varying from here to here. I have, this is the second case. I have resistivity, low resistivity, high resistivity, again low resistivity, like this. So very high resistivity, this is resistivity symbol. High resistivity, 
this relativity I compare with the standard values. We also call master curve standard values. It compares well with the known material which I have already tested in the laboratory. It may compare well with the granite. This may compare well with the sandstone. And in between there may be some pockets where something non-porous material may be there. Again, otherwise it's a sandstone. Again, moderate resistivity, there may be, its resistivity value is comparable with the shale like this. How exactly, if along a ground resistivity is varying and with the depth the resistivity is varying, when I have the combination of these two, I can understand what is the rock below at 100 meter, 200 meter, 50 meter, whether it is containing water or not containing water, etc. I use electrical resistivity method. What is electrical resistivity method? There it is very simple. I have, see, suppose this is a ground. I have, yes, this is the ground. I have two potential electrodes and two current electrodes. I pass a known current. I have measuring device here and I measure the potential difference between these two points. What is that? I pass a current, known current. I know what is that. And measure the potential difference between these two points. When I pass the current flows like this, current flows like this, current flows like this. Right? How this flows here? Should they flow here? No. Depends on the configuration. If this is the depth, this is the depth. This. If, say this is 5 meter, 5 meter, 5 meter, this may be. If this is 10 meter, 10 meter, this may be. If this is 15 meter, this may be. If this is 20 meter, this may be. If this is 25 meter, this may be. It means, by increasing the depth of spacing between the electrode, I can increase the depth of a flow of current and hence I can measure the properties of the rock below the ground. Okay, thus I can change the distance between the electrodes, electrode spacing, then the potential difference. Now, this is a simple technique. Now there are different methods we go ahead further. Now these are the equipotential line, the current flow lines and we measure this is the current, these are all an instrument we call resistivity meter where everything is properly arranged and we have to use them in the field, switch on, required current, everything is recorded in the instrument and what you get the current and difference potential difference you measure and you can gradually change the electrode. You go to the ground in the field and if this is the ground you may, this is the configuration. Okay, this is the configuration. I depends on the distance, I may able to understand this much depth. The same instrument setup now I bring, I am able to understand this much. The same instrument I bring here, the same setup, I am able to understand. The same I shift here, able to understand. This is the picture I get. Correct? Now, this is one way. The another way, is, suppose I have the instrument, I have the same thing, no, if this is 5 meter, this is the depth corresponding to that meter, if I increase this depth, mean the distance instead of here I bring this one here this one here like increase the depth between the different electrodes the current flow is a degrader 
if I increase further, current flows further deeper. Thus, with depth, what is change in resistivity, I am getting here. Friends, with the help of electrical resistivity meter, we can understand the subsurface geological formations. Not only that, even if there is any fractures, faults, pores, mineral deposit, anything is there, we can find out. So, this is a simple electrical resistivity meter. We have the variety of instruments available and using that instrument, how we will able to understand subsurface geological condition, we shall try to understand. Now, there are different electrode combination system. Two different scientists, one is a, a scientist called Wenner. He is proposed a kind of electrical or this electrode spacing. He suggests that these two are the potential electrodes and these two are the current electrodes. They have to be placed at equidistant. This is current electrode, current electrode, potential electrode, potential electrode and there the distance is constant using the apparent resistivity. Apparent, I have to calculate the true resistivity from this. Apparent resistivity is given by formula 2 phi is a constant alpha is the distance between or a distance between electrodes so vi i the current and from that v will able to calculate and this current and we are recorded in the instrument. We have this I and we are recorded and this A is known. This A is known whether the different distance or equidistance. A is known, V is known, I is known. I will able to calculate the apparent resistivity. From that apparent resistivity, I will able to calculate true resistivity. From the true resistivity, I try to understand what is the rocks below it. This is once. There is one more method it we call Schlumberger, another scientist proposed and he placed two potential electrodes close to each other and electrode that is current electrodes are farther. To obtain the best result, experience is if between P1 and P2, if 5 between M and A, it is 5 times or more. That is, that is the ideal relation and he gives the formula of apparent resistivity is given by 2 phi to L is the total distance between A and B between and A is the small a is the distance between the potential electrodes. L is the distance between the current electrode, it should be sorry, capital A and B and a, sorry, it is a distance between a and A is the distance between A is the distance between M and N. This is capital A, this is M and N. So, L is the distance between these and A is the distance between these two electrodes and he gives the formula of this. Now using this it is possible to calculate. Now all the four electrodes are placed in a line in both the cases but the distance between the current electrode A, B is maintained equal to or phi times the distance between potential electrode in the Schlumberger method. This is the formula. Okay, now what we do, either that method or this method, we get the true resistivity. How to obtain true resistivity? We shall try now. True resistivity we get, that true resistivity value we compare with the standard rocks which we have, we call library, we call, means for all the known rocks we have obtained their resistivity when it is saturated, when it is dry, etc. under that condition. For example, granite has the value range in range. You find quartzite has a wide range and like that alluvial and clay has very low resistivity, shale has this range. We give the range not one point. 
because granite of chamundi granite from mysore may be little different from granites of hampi or hospate slight difference is there is one way second if the granite contains little amount of moisture again it's different therefore for any rock we give you the range now you find that is a overlap this is very challenging under given situation if i have this resistivity value whether this is a granite or gabbro question comes <coughs> we shall try to resolve it a little later okay now whatever from the apparent resistivity i get true resistivity from the true resistivity i compare those resistivity and try to understand what may be the rocks below the ground in general we have clay this is the resistivity for sedimentary rocks in generalizing i am igneous rocks have this much high resistivity metamorphic rocks e like this these are in general based on the resistivity in the field itself i can able to guess then i calculate the true resistivity and compare with known values whether it is a saturated or like that variable saturation for example sandstone from here to here when i say sandstone the sandstone say i find in some other area is different from this area because depends on the age of the rock how best they are compacted how much water they contain accordingly their resistivity values vary and therefore we give the range using this field observed data can we attempt to get the true resistivity and what is that rock formation yes we shall try with an exercise so this is the action data obtained by a vertical electrical sounding survey using wenner configuration in a hard rock terrain is listed below compute the geoelectrical parameter by inverse slope method for wenner configuration what is that we have to use we know it we will try this problem 